everyone, you're welcome to solve this nice algebra problem, which is 24x to the power of 3 minus 8x to the power of 2. This is equal to 1. So, what are the values of x given that x is not equal to 0? So, let's prevent a solution from here. Now, we have 24x to the power of 3, then minus 8 x to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. We can express 24 as 8 times 3, multiplied by x to the power of 3, then subtract 8, we can express 8 as 4, multiplied by 2, then multiplying by x to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. Now, from here, we can express 8 as 2 to the power of 3, and we can express 4 as 2 to the power of 2. So this implies that here we have 3 times 2 to the power of 3, then times x to the power of 3, then minus 4, which is 2 to the power of 2, then multiplying by 2, multiplying by x to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. So here we have 3 times 2 to the power of 3, multiplying by x to the power of 3 minus. Now here we have 3 multiplying by 2 to the power of 3, multiplying by x to the power of 3, subtract. Here we can have this as 2 times 2 to the power of 2, then x multiplying by x to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. Now from here we can express this 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3, this is in the form of a to the power of n times b to the power of n, which you can express as a, b, raised to the power of n. So applying this exponent property, then we have 3 into the parentheses. This is 2x raised to the power of 3. Then subtract. Here we can express this as 2, multiplying by into the parentheses. Here we have 2x raised to the power of 2. This is equal to 1. The next step is that we can let 2x b equal to u. Substituting u into this equation, then we have 3 u to the power of 3, subtract 2 u to the power of 2, this is equal to 1. So let's take 1 on the left hand side, so that now we have 3 u to the power of 3 minus 2 u to the power of 2, subtract 1, this is equal to 0. The next step from here, we can express, now we can express minus 2 u to the power of 2. This is the same thing as minus 3 u to the power of 2, then plus u to the power of 2. Substituting this part here back to the equation, then we have 3 u to the power of 3, then subtract 3 u to the power of 2 then plus u to the power of 2, subtract 1. This is equal to 0. The next step from here, if you check this part here, we have that 3 u squared is common here, so we can factor out 3 u to the power of 2, so that into the parentheses, we have u minus 1, cross the parentheses, then plus, here we have, we can express this as u to the power of 2 minus, now this is the same thing as 1 to the power of 2, this is equal to 0. Okay, so we have u to the power of 2 minus 1 to the power of 2, this is in the form of a squared minus b squared, this is the difference of two squares that we can express as a plus b, a minus b. Now applying this identity, then here we have u to the power of 2 minus 1 to the power of 2. This is the same thing as u plus 1, then u minus 1. So let's substitute this back to the equation here. We have 3 u to the power of 2, then here we have u minus 1, then plus, here we have u plus 1, then we have u minus 1. This is equal to 0. 
from this equation here, u minus 1 is common here. So we can factor out u minus 1. So we have u minus 1 into the parentheses. This is 3u squared. Then plus, here we have u plus 1 cross the parentheses. This is equal to 0. So we have two parts here. The first part is u minus 1. This is equal to 0. And the second part here, we have 3 u squared plus u plus 1. This is equal to 0. From the first part here, we have that u1, this is equal to 1. Okay? Now, if you recall, we have seen that let 2x be equal to u. So we can substitute 2x with u. So that now here we have 2x, this is equal to 1. So let's divide both signs by 2. So that now we have x1 is equal to half. Okay? So we have the first value of x. Let's proceed to solve for the other values of u in this equation here. Now this part here, this is a quadratic equation of the form a u squared plus b u plus c. This is equal to 0. From this quadratic equation here, we have that a is equal to 3, we have that b is equal to 1, and that c is equal to 1. So we can apply the quadratic formula to solve for u2, u3. The formula here is minus b plus or minus the square root of, here we have b squared minus 4ac, everything here divided by 2 times a. Let's substitute the values of a, b, and c in this formula so that now we have minus 1 plus or minus the square root of. Now we have 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, then times c. In this case, c is equal to 1 divided by we have 2 times a. Remember, a is equal to 3. Now here we have minus 1 plus or minus the square root of here we have 1 squared this is 1 minus 4 times 3 this is 12 divided by 2 times 3 which is equal to 6 so that now here we have minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 12 this is minus 11 divided by 6. Now, here we have minus 1 plus or minus. We can express the square root of minus 11 as the square root of 11 times minus 1. Everything here divided by 6. So, this implies that here we have minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1. This is the same thing as i then we have square root of 11 divided by 6. So this is what is u2, comma u3. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we are saying that let 2x be equal to u. So from here, we can substitute 2x so that we have 2x. This is equal to minus 1 plus or minus i square root of 11 over 6. So this implies that let's multiply both sides by 1 over 2. So let's multiply this side by 1 over 2. So by simplifying 2 and 2 here, then we have that x is equal to, in this case, we have this is minus 1 plus or minus i square root of 11 div divided by 6 times 2. This is equal to 12. And this implies that, now this implies that x2 is equal to minus 1 plus i square root of 11 divided by 12. 
and we have that x3 is equal to minus 1, subtract i square root of 11 over 12. x2 and x3, these are two complex solutions. These are two complex solutions for this algebra problem. So this implies that we have only one real solution, then this is equal to half. So we have x1, which is equal to half. This is the only real solution here. So the next step from here is to verify. So let's verify. Let's verify that x1, which is a half here, satisfies the equation. So if you recall, we have that 24x to the power of 3, subtract, we have 8, x to the power of 2, this is supposed to give us a value of 1. Let's substitute the value of x here, which is a half, so that we have 24 times x, which is a half, raised to the power of 3, then minus 8, times here we have a half, raised to the power of 2, this should give us a value of 1. So, now we have 24 times, this is actually equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 3, this is 8, then minus 8 times 1 over 2 to the power of 2, this is 4, this is supposed to give us a value of 1. The next step from here, 24 divided by 8, this is equal to 3, so we have 3 minus, now here we have to simplify it, 8 divided by 4, this is equal to 2, so we have 3 minus 2, this is supposed to give us a value of 1. 3 minus 2, this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. So this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side, and this proves that the value of x, which is a half, satisfies the equation. So this algebra problem, we have three solutions here. We have one leaf solution and two complex solutions. So can you follow the steps? Like this video and subscribe. Country, like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.